You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. A very good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the General Authority for Husseiniyah Processions, the GAHP, led by Ahmed bin Muhsin bin Saloum, upon the ending of Ashura season. His Majesty the King noted the efforts of the authority in organizing religious events as well as its cooperation and coordination. He stressed the importance of such events in reinforcing cooperation and brotherhood between Bahraini people and uniting their Islamic values. He expressed thanks and appreciation to all people who contributed to organizing these events. He highlighted Bahrain's freedom in practicing religions without discrimination. His Majesty the King noted that Bahraini people have always respected different religions which contributed to protecting the national social fabric and cohesion. His Majesty the King added that Bahrain will always be a secure and stable homeland for all people regardless of their religions. The authority affirmed that this meeting represents the King's support for the yearly Ashura season activities. They added that it is proof of his belief in religious coexistence which he documented in the Bahraini constitution under his reform project. The authority commended the wise leadership's adoption of the concept of tolerance and unity, they presented the king with a letter that included their gratitude for His Majesty's constant care and support for Ashura events. The authority confirmed in its letter their support and appreciation for His Majesty's directives which call for national unity on all levels. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the participants of This Is Bahrain Festival, which will take place in Italy next month. The event is organized by the Expatriate Association Union. The audience briefed the King on the event that aims to highlight Bahrain's cultural position and its achievements. His Majesty the King thanked the audience for their efforts in promoting Bahrain's cultural aspects and achievements that were made possible due to Bahrain's openness and coexistence values, adding that these values have protected Bahrain and fanaticism and extremism. He praised Bahrain history that it is based on moderation and openness to different cultures. His Majesty stressed that Bahrain will always be a land that embraces people from all religions and cultures without discrimination. He affirmed that all individuals have the right of a safe and decent life in Bahrain, adding that the kingdom continues to march towards maintaining its pillars of respect for freedom, religions and cultures. The Italian ambassador Domenico Bellato gave a speech in which he emphasized the strong friendly relations between Bahrain and Italy. He said he would spare no effort in order to bond bolster the already existing relations for the benefit of both countries and people and added that he would explore the bilateral cultural, economic and political opportunities. He hailed His Majesty's implementation of religious freedom, interfaith dialogue and moderation, adding that Bahrain is a leading example in this respect. The Italian ambassador expressed his pleasure to welcome This Is Bahrain in Rome, which will visit the Italian capital in a few weeks. He added that he will try his best to ensure the success of the event, which aims to bring people of all faiths and cultures together to promote peace. He recalled His Majesty's visit to the Pope, where he presented him with a model of Our Lady of Arabia Cathedral, and added that he looks forward to the implementation of this project, which is another example of His Majesty's support. Uh, to be... Uh, part of what you are all and what we are all doing and getting everybody together and that's not something I would call uh, new to Bahrain it's been like this I believe for if not thousands of years hundreds of years Bahrain is like, let uh, me put it, uh, Alexandria. Where in Alexandria, in the old days, people lived together. They joined uh, together with their philosophies, with their religions their sects, languages, they respected each other and they produced a, a wonderful community that protected Alexandria against extremism, against uh, whatever a human nature does not like. We are proud to say that Bahrain and Bahrainis in particular have always welcomed people coming from all over the world to live, to study, and uh, 
Bahrainis as well, went to the others in the, around the whole world, trying as well to learn with respect to their cultures, to their religions, without making one enemy. Their aim in life is always to make more friends. And that's their nature, which makes me proud of being what I am. When we started, uh, let me call it, not movement, but this lifestyle, uh, civilized, advanced, good thinking, everybody supported us and everybody wished us the best. And again, I am proud and honored to be able to manage uh, this effort with you. The, uh, the chair holding my name, teaching young people from all over the world, I hope it teaches this, you know, what Bahrain think, what Bahrain does, what Bahrain did. Of course, some of things that they say about what Bahrain is doing, well, I don't see it really. All I see is what I know, and what I know are great values with great respect to all our religions, to all our cultures, to our all civilization, wherever it is. Uh, the history I've read, the history I know, Bahrain has been the, the country of free men. And when lately people were talking about Bahrain should give more freedom, it was not pleasant for Bahrainis who feel free for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, to be told that you are not free and you need to be freer. But if we look at things, when we compare, I think we have more freedom than anybody else. I mean, thank God, you know, we don't have a lot of to really get us not doing anything but to be with a lawyer next door to you. We, we are still free. We can do our way of life. They talked about how bad Islam is. Well, Islam is nothing to do with it. Islam means peace. And actually, people talk the period about the period before Islam. We call it Al Jahiliya. Al Jahiliya, which means when people have no sense. And some of them became Muslims, but with Al Jahiliya in his mind and in his heart. And, and, and now, that's not Islam. And it's been very difficult to differentiate, you know, for anybody to see or to understand or to notice the difference between who is uh, the Muslim and who is Al Jahili. To me, we are all Muslims, including yourselves, because we all love peace. We all love one another. We all love good values. And that's what it is all about. Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing special. And we all believe in one God. And that's important. But how, what is the way to it? What, how to do it? That's something else. But our God is one. And 
Lately, it's important that we differentiate between al-jahiliya uh, wal-islam. Now, it takes scholars to write books on this issue because the line is very thin and you can't see it very clearly. I can because I've been brought up as Muslim, which means people that are safe from uh, the use of his hand and his tongue, that's a good Muslim, which means he will speak well, he will make friends, and so on. So when we talk about universities, scholarships, and students, I only wish and hope that we teach them what we really have seen ourselves, because it's a pity they don't know this. It's a pity. If they don't know it, I mean, we have not transmitted it to them. So really, I trust you. You will do your utmost, like in a very short period of time, you've been all over the world and a lot of successes happened together from different parts of all cultures with different ideas, but I'm sure you were all linked by one, and that is goodness in this world. And I'd like to thank you, Ambassador, thank you, Patsy, thank you all for what you have done for Bahrain. Thank you. Thank you. The Italian ambassador expressed appreciation for His Majesty's perspective of establishing a chair at the leading University of Rome. The Bahrain Federation of Expatriate Associations' signature This is Bahrain Roadshow has been growing in size and success with each international destination, from London to Berlin, Brussels, Paris, Washington DC and New York. The upcoming edition in Rome, Italy, to be held from November 9th to 12th, will be the largest and most elaborate event to date. Over 300 delegates, representing schools, clubs and societies, NGOs and all faiths, will travel from the kingdom to promote the richness and diversity of the Bahraini way of life. Additionally, on the sidelines of the exhibition, there will be unique and exciting activities that share the traditions and spirit of the kingdom with the world. We will be having a multi-faith wedding celebration where around 10 young couples from the United Kingdom, from France, from Italy, from Germany, from Belgium will be married and there will be a wedding blessing uh, carried out by um, religious leaders of all different faiths uh, from around Europe. And then the wonderful Bahrain police band will be playing and we'll be having um, a Hafla Zawaj, a real Bahraini wedding uh, celebration in Rome. And then um, a few days later, these young couples will travel to Bahrain as our guests in the kingdom, and they will attend a real Bahraini wedding feast. Most significantly, This is Bahrain and Rome will leave behind a lasting legacy of interfaith dialogue and peaceful coexistence, in line with His Majesty the King's guiding vision of promulgating peace and love for generations to come. The most exciting news really is the chair in the name of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at Italy's leading university. Now this is um, a world first. Uh, for the first time ever in the world um, there is a new academic discipline and it will be the studies of interfaith dialogue and peaceful coexistence. Young people from all over the globe will come to Rome to study His Majesty's philosophy and to understand more not just about the Kingdom of Bahrain but also about the importance of education um, because education removes ignorance and when you remove ignorance you don't have that fear and the vulnerability that can lead young people to become radicalized. The centuries-old Bahraini message of embracing the richness of diversity in peaceful coexistence is coming to Rome, Italy from November 9th. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, expressed his deep condolences to the people of Thailand at the Royal Palace in Bangkok on the passing of His Majesty King of Thailand, Bomebol Adol Yadej. His Royal Highness recorded his condolences on the official condolences record in which he expressed his heartfelt sympathies to Her, Her Majesty Queen Sereket, members of the royal family, government and people. He affirmed that the Thai King's name will be remembered in the hearts of the Thai people and the generations to come for all his tremendous efforts in achieving peace, security and stability around the world and for his role in achieving progress and prosperity to his country. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of the Bahrain Athletic Association, His Honor Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met today at his Majlis in Rafah. Youth and Sports Director General of the General Organization for Youth and Sports and Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar, in the presence of the chairman of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Association, BMMA, Colonel Khalid Abdaziz Al Khayat, the CEO of the Khalid bin Hamad Mixed Martial Arts Organization, Hamad Shahid, and board members of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, Fawad. Shamsan. He was designated honorary president of the Bahrain Federation for Mixed Martial Arts. The chairman of BMMA gave a detailed presentation about the vision, strategic goals and the work plan of the federation as well as the top championship that are to be hosted in Bahrain in the following year. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that Bahrain has become an athletically advanced country and that it attracts many sports and international championships, particularly mixed martial arts. He stressed that this success came as a result of creating a proper environment for the youth in Bahrain as well as supporting them and giving them a chance to represent the kingdom in international events. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that Bahrain has many young talents that would add to mixed martial arts and commended the efforts of the Bahrain Federation for Self-Defense under the chairmanship of Ahmed Abdelaziz Al Khayat. For his part, Colonel Khalid Al Khayat, on behalf of himself and the board members, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for accepting the honorary presidency of the Bahrain Federation for Mixed Martial Arts. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired today the second ordinary meeting of the third session of the fourth legislative term. The Council approved forming a committee to prepare a project to respond to His Majesty's royal speech and to re elect members of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Council approved issuing a statement on the importance of the international community to act fast on saving innocent lives of children, women, and people in Iraq. Mosul and allocate safe passages for them. The Council then discussed the following draft laws, air transport agreement with the Czech Republic and Tunisia, air services agreement with Hungary and Georgia, and transferring the sentence people agreement between Bahrain and India. The Council discussed amending the following draft laws, penal code law, some laws of the Bahrain Central Bank and the financial institutions, social security, traffic laws, passports, rehab of people with special needs law, and insurance against unemployment law. The meeting then discussed a number of draft laws on the Representative and Shura Council's affairs, electricity and water affairs, and raise the minimum pension of people who are under the supervision of the social insurance law. The Council then discussed a draft on approving consumer protection law of the GCC countries, and all draft laws were referred to the concerned committees. 
The Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar, took part in the United Nations Conference on Housing and Sustainable Urban Development, Habitat 3, which was held at Queto, Ecuador today. The meeting delivered, or the minister rather, delivered a speech in which he conveyed the greetings of the kingdom's leadership and government to the conference participants. He added this international gathering offers the optimal opportunity to exchange viewpoints, review successful experiences in the field, with the aim of coming up with recommendations. He said Bahrain has implemented significant projects in diversification of its economy, with with the aim of boosting productivity and uplifting the standards of living and the provision of job opportunities for its citizens. The minister created a universal system for social protection to address the dossier of social equality and to support the population segments, according to the minister. The Kingdom of Bahrain has over the last five decades given a great priority to, issue, to the issue of urban development in all government programs and plans. Such a dedication is inspired by the strong belief of Bahrain's leaders and government in the importance, in the importance of providing all Bahrainis living conditions worthy of human dignity and respect. The president of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, BACA, Sheikh May bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the fifth Global Tourism Forum, GTEF, at the invitation of the World Tourism Organization. The forum was held in the city of Macau, China, with the participation of tourism and culture industry leaders from around the world, government officials, business experts, and academic researchers. The forum focused on ways to invest the increasing number of tourists in promoting the sustainable development projects. BACA president stressed taking every opportunity available to build bridges of communication with the people of the world to enrich the experience of Bahrain and enhance its standing as a cultural center. She pointed out BACA's efforts in creating an attractive cultural infrastructure to bolster the sustainable development projects. The Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Darasat, held a seminar today to discuss the impact of the controversial JASTA law on public order. More in this report. The Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, JUSTA, is a law passed by the United States Congress that narrows the scope of the legal doctrine of foreign sovereign immunity. In a seminar held by Bahrain Center for Strategic International Energy Studies, Derasat, Director Khaled al ruwahi explained the threat of the JUSTA law in the Middle East region and the global scene. JUSTA comes in a situation where the world is in a chaos. The Middle East, as witnessed by everybody, is, is undergoing a very critical situation. Uh, the important of that uh, part is that the United Nations cannot solve a very simple situation like it's what's happening in Syria and uh, in addition to, to what's happening in Yemen. Uh, there are certain countries in the world trying to just uh, penetrate in other countries and the world order is falling behind that. Bahraini researcher Omar Al-Abedli, meanwhile, confirmed that the law has no impact on our region because it will simply not be applied. The impact will be almost zero because the uh, U.S. government is going to take steps to ensure that it does not apply the law um, because the U.S. government will realize that applying the law in, in, in the way that it is perceived to be applied will create lots of negative consequences for the U.S. So therefore they will use all the available means to avoid the law having uh, being used and therefore having any impact. al Abedli also highlighted that the law will be drastically amended so the United States does not lose its relations with the rest of the world, especially in the economic field. The, um, the, if they use it, it will create costs, extra costs for the U.S. government in s several factors. First of all, other countries will do the same, um, and that will mean that military planning becomes very difficult, strategic planning becomes very difficult because the U.S. will be scared of how what the consequences will be. Secondly, the the l rule itself, the law itself, um, has the appearance of being very um, arbitrary. Uh, and this kind of arbitrary and politically motivated rulemaking uh, is, uh, makes international investors feel very worried and concerned. And so it will decrease the attractiveness of the U.S. as an investment destination, um, which will create um, unnecessary pressure for the, on the U.S. dollar.
The law amends the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act and the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act in regards to civil claims against a foreign state for injuries, death or damages from an act of international terrorism. Just it comes against many international laws and United Nations resolutions which led to warnings from many analysts and researchers that the law could encourage other countries to enact measures that limit sovereign immunity, including the United States, and it could lead to legal response in other countries against U.S. activities. The Judicial and Legal Studies Institute, in collaboration with the Supreme Judicial Council, organized a roundtable discussion with judicial experts from around the world. More on this report with Shulgam Hamad. The Judicial and Legal Studies Institute, Supreme Judicial Council, Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs, and the U.S. Department of Commerce collaborated on a judicial roundtable meeting regarding court automation and court specialization. Members of the judicial sector from the Kingdom of Bahrain, Morocco, Tunis, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the United States of America were present for the discussion and provided their expertise. The participants were given an opportunity to exchange information regarding the latest developments and challenges they've come across. We in the Ministry of Justice are working under the strategy that has been laid by the Supreme Judicial Council. Uh, within our jurisdiction, we are dealing with it and we are uh, uh, of uh, a conviction that uh, we have to put an infrastructure that is able to carry justice efficiently uh, in terms of procedures, in terms of IT, in terms of uh, training of the staff, in terms of having JLSI, the Judicial Institute. So all of these things are, are f pouring into one direction, which is to serve justice. The aim of the discussion was to generate ideas on how to improve the efficacy and transparency in courts. We have different legal systems, but the goals are the same. We want impartial, efficient, predictable, fair resolution of disputes. That's what all of us who are privileged to serve as judges in any country, including Bahrain and the United States, all want that. That's what our goal is, and that's what brings us together. Today's discussion has been an effective and informative one here at the Judicial and Legal Studies Institute. For Bahrain News, I'm Shogun Mohammed.